Hey, Margie here. Inflammation is one of the root causes of osteoporosis that's often overlooked. But yet, when we address the underlying inflammation, we can improve both our bones and overall health. And today we're going to delve into the topic of inflammation because so much can be done. And I'm really excited about our special guest. He's one of my favorites, Dr. Tom O'Brien. And Dr. O'Brien is considered a Sherlock Holmes for chronic disease and teaches that recognizing and addressing the underlying mechanisms that cause inflammation and activate an immune response is the map to the highway towards better health. He holds teaching faculty positions with the Institute for Functional Medicine and the National University of Health Sciences. He has trained and certified tens of thousands of practitioners around the world in in the advanced understanding of the impact of wheat sensitivity and the development of individual autoimmune diseases. And today he's going to share so much knowledge on inflammation that we can really put into our lives to make a big difference. So lots of great information coming up, so stay tuned. Welcome, Dr. Tom. I always love having you. It's always such a treat. So thanks for being here today. Oh, thank you. It's always fun to be with you, too. So that's really nice. Thank you. You know, I'm so excited about this new docuseries, and I think it's so, and we'll go into it in more detail, but I think it's so important and so timely because most people may not even realize, and I know in my community of people with osteoporosis and bone health issues, a lot of times people have no idea that what's what's one of the catalysts that's really causing bone breakdown is inflammation. And it's not one of the top things considered. So why don't you explain why this is just so important that we focus and why you did an entire docuseries on inflammation? Oh, you bet, you bet. So, you know, I travel over the world and I'm lecturing at medical conferences. Um, uh, in November, it was Sao Paulo, Brazil. In December, it was Rome. In January, it was New Delhi, India. Uh, that, um, and what I've realized is that doctors and healthcare practitioners don't think about where do the symptoms come from so much. What they're really interested in is how, how can I help my patient feel better right away, and which is really important. It's really important. But if you don't address the underlying mechanisms and you put the high blood pressure I- into remission, so blood pressure comes down normally, either with pharmaceuticals temporarily or by a natural approach that's more long-term, and if you don't address where it's all coming from, then it's going to manifest somewhere else stronger than as high blood pressure. It's going to manifest as um, a a cognitive decline and brain deterioration, or as joint decline, or bone decline. Uh, Because the, the CDC, the Center for Disease Control, tells us that 14 of the 15 top causes of death in the world today are chronic inflammatory diseases. It's always inflammation. But we don't address inflammation when we're dealing with osteoporosis. We don't address inflammation when we're dealing with high blood pressure. We don't address inflammation when we're dealing with recurrent miscarriages. We're dealing with the problem that's right in front of us and trying to put it into remission, which is so important. But you've got to look at where did all this come from? So when I realized that doctors really weren't talking about this, then I I got the passion to travel the world and many countries interviewed over 60 now of world leaders in gut function, immune function, brain function to see what's the consensus here. And the consensus is it's always inflammation. And you've got to, you see, if you pull it a chain, it always breaks at the weakest link, always. It's at one end, maybe the middle, the other end, wherever the weak link is. Well, the weak link is determined by your genetics and how you live your life, called antecedents, meaning if you eat tuna fish two or three times a week, you likely have mercury toxicity because all the, almost all the tuna has high levels of mercury, right? 
So that's an antecedent. That means the weak link will be around where the storage of mercury is in your body, perhaps. But the pull on the chain is always inflammation. So you do a drug for high blood pressure to strengthen that link a little bit so the high blood pressure comes down, but you still have the same level of inflammation pulling on the chain. It's going to break at the next weakest link a little further down the road. Now you've got cognitive decline, and it's pretty advanced. You know, whatever the manifestation, it doesn't matter. It's always inflammation. That's the bottom line that we interviewed the scientists about, and every single scientist agreed. Even those that are really strong about their field of interest, you know, whatever it should be, they said, well, yeah, yeah, but it's, it's inflammation that triggers all of this off. And so we want everyone to understand what is inflammation and what to do about it. That's the big goal here. So what is inflammation? Mrs. Patient, your immune system is the armed forces in your body. It's there to protect you. There's an army, a navy, an air force, a marines, a coast guard. We call them IgA, IgG, IgE, IgM, cytokines. They're all different branches of the armed forces that protect you. That's the job of the immune system. And the way they protect you is by creating inflammation when there's a threat. And that is how our ancestors survived, you know, before agriculture. So about 10,000 years ago, all of our ancestors were nomads. They followed the herds. There were, there were no villages. There were no towns. They followed the herds because a constant source of food. And uh, they would walk along and their primary concern was to find food so they'd see something they'd pick it up they'd smell it they'd nibble at it and then they eat it and that's how our ancestors survived was by finding food to eat well if they ate something that had a bad bug that they couldn't tell by smelling it or tasting it and that bug comes through the stomach into the first part of the small intestine. You have sentries standing guard there. And I think of the sentries at Buckingham Palace, you know, those big hats, and they're as stiff as can be. They look dormant, like the sentries inside your immune system. They're dormant inside your gut. They're not doing anything. However, you don't mess with those guys. Those guys will take you down in one moment if you're a threat. And in our gut, we have immune cells called toll-like receptors. They will take down whatever the threat is immediately. They see something coming out of the stomach, they fire their chemical bullets right away, creating inflammation. And they also activate the proteins to create leaky gut. Why? Because leaky gut brings water into the gut that washes out the bug with the bowel movement, with the poop. So anytime your immune system sees a threat in the gut, it does two things. It activates leaky gut for water coming in, and it activates inflammation. That's how our bodies function. That's what saved our ancestors. Those that didn't have good sentries in their gut, they died because you know every, uh, all of our ancestors ate food that wasn't safe. Uh, and they had to have a strong immune system. So the ones that died, they didn't reproduce. So their genetics died out. But those that had good defense mechanisms, when you had a bad bug, it killed the bug. They survived, they reproduced, and that's the genes we carry today. So we all have this mechanism. And I go through all of that because at Harvard, they tell us the one food that activates that inflammation in the gut every time it comes out of the stomach is gluten. There's nothing else that activates the gut like this every single time you eat it. You know, some foods can be a problem for people, but this is for everyone. And so we interviewed wheat experts, celiac experts as part of it. But the emphasis and what we want to show people is that the million-dollar question is, okay, you've got inflammation going on. That's why 
you've had recurrent miscarriages or that's why your child has seizures or that's why you've been diagnosed with Hashimoto's thyroid or with osteoporosis. You've got inflammation going on. So the million-dollar question, what is your immune system trying to protect you from? And that's what doctors don't think about. And they don't explore what are the triggers that are activating the immune response in you. And so that's what we interviewed the scientists about. And every single one of them agreed. You know, you can't argue with this. This is basic 101 that should be everyone's included in everyone's approach to being healthier. What is my immune system fighting that I think is fine? Because if you knew it was a problem, you'd stop it. But if you think it's fine, you're not going to stop it. So we know, for example, Alzheimer's, the inflammation in the brain is going on for 20 to 25 years before you ever have a problem with memory. For 20 to 25 years, osteoporosis, we know it's at least seven years, if not more, of inflammation killing off bone cells, killing off bone cells, killing off bone cells before you ever have a diagnosis of osteopenia, the precursor to osteoporosis. So this inflammation is always there beforehand. It doesn't matter what the disease is. So we want to educate people, how do I identify this inflammation and begin to reduce your exposures? Yeah, I love that. Before we even get into that in more detail, I just want to say from my summit, where I had, you know, I think over 55 speakers, so many of the integrative doctors and so many of the people, such a big issue was gluten when it came to osteoporosis. Huge. Everybody was, you know, in terms of being one of the underlying root causes of inflammation, causing bone breakdown and causing increase in the osteoclast, you know, breaking down bone activity. And so right. something I've seen for I've seen for so many years that when people gave up gluten and you know did the other things as necessary, but that was one of the main components that was necessary so that they could move on, they could get out of this inflammatory state. As you say, I, I love your expression, you know, put the water on the fire. You know, we need to stop to to stop the inflammation, like step one. So it's it's I so agree with you. All right. So everybody listening, how do they know? You know, and again, I know you're we're gonna you, you have it in so much more detail, but just in a nutshell, like what things could people be aware of that they may be having some inflammation? When your body's not working the way it want, you, you want it to, that's a bottom line. It doesn't matter whether you're tired in the morning when you wake up or whether your joints are sore when you stand up or whether you, you get headaches. They're not too bad, but you get headaches on occasion. It, it, it doesn't matter. Or your skin is a little dry. It doesn't matter what the symptoms are. It's always inflammation that's the mechanism developing into disease. Always. So uh, to the question, well, what kind of symptoms do I have if I have inflammation? Well, the classic ones when it's really bad is that it's red, your skin is red, it's hot, it's painful, and it doesn't work the way it's supposed to. So if it's your joint, you can't lift your shoulder up very much or um, you've, you've got... Uh, uh, numbness or tingling, uh, or your skin's red. Um, it it doesn't matter what the symptoms are, and quite honestly, uh, everyone has excess inflammation if you're not living a blue zone life. And the blue zone life is those people that live into their 90s, over a hundred, on no medications, fully functional, still enjoying life valuable members of society. They're called the Blue Zone people. And uh, I tell all my patients, that's the one book you have to read because that's where the pedal hits the metal. You want to have a long and vital life and be fully functional? Uh, you read the Blue Zones. Because, you know, we've known for many years, the, the World Health Organization tells us, and now we know that the expected lifespan for newborn babies is two years less than their parents' expected lifespan, uh, that our lifespan's going down because so many people are sick and diseases are more prevalent now. We know that, you know. But uh, we also know that the average lifespan for males currently is 75 
75.2 or 75.3, but the average healthy lifespan is 65.8, meaning for almost everyone, the last 10 years of your life are not healthy. You're on medications, you've got disease, you're not functioning the way that you were before, you're going towards immobility and, and being unable to function for 10 years before you die. And if you don't want that kind of future, which almost everyone has that future, just look at the numbers. Healthy lifespan is 65.8. Total lifespan, 75.2. Well, wait a minute. What's no, 75.3? What's the difference between healthy lifespan and total lifespan? The last 10 years, you're immobile. You know, you, you're on medications to try and function, to keep your pain down or to keep your function a little better. And if you don't want that, then addressing these triggers of inflammation now while you feel fine and it's, they're not immobilizing you yet and you address them now helps to ensure you're going to have higher quality of life in your senior years. You know, I love that, that you're making these lifestyle changes that are doable. I mean, that's the beauty. They're doable before you have the symptoms. And this is not conventional medicine. This is not what, you know, typically you'll go to the doctor. I want to address these things as prevention. But how wonderful, because I'm, I'm with you. We want to live wonderful, long, healthy lives. And, you know, I just turned 65, so I don't want that 10 year. <laughs> exactly. You know, and for younger people, I'm actually targeting two groups, hoping that we um, are attractive to two main groups, of course, to everyone. But one group are the baby boomers because most of us in that baby boomer, baby boomer category, our bodies are breaking down, you know, and so we need to try to identify how do I save what I've got left. And then women of childbearing age, uh, 20 something and early 30 somethings, because I believe the only way we're going to save the planet is to have a generation of children that think outside the box, they think of different answers. Uh, to the problems that we face today. But the only way you're going to have children like that is if their brains are working really well. Now, we know, uh, uh, let me tell you of a study. I mean, there are many studies like this. Chicago, 2016, 326 pregnant women in the eighth month of pregnancy, they did urine tests to see how many phthalates they had, which are chemicals used to mold plastic. And we all have it in our bodies. We don't know it, most of us, but we do. But so they measured all these pregnant women and they put the results into fourths. The lowest amount of phthalates in the urine, the next, the third, and the highest. They followed the, the offspring of those pregnancies for seven years. And when the kids turned seven years old, they did Wexler IQ tests on them, the official IQ test. Now there's not much in medicine that's all or every, but this was every. Every child whose mother was in the highest category of phthalates in urine in pregnancy compared to the children in the lowest category of phthalates in urine in pregnancy, every child in the highest category, their moms were in the highest category, these children, their IQ was seven points lower than these children. Seven points, every one of them. 6.7 to 7.4 points lower. Now, that doesn't mean anything to anyone until you understand a one-point difference in IQ is noticeable. A seven-point difference is the difference between a child working really hard, getting straight A's in school, and a child working really hard, getting straight C's in the school. That this child doesn't have a chance ever of excelling because their brain never developed properly. Now just Google phthalates and neurogenesis. Here come the studies. The higher the phthalate level, the more inhibition of brain cell growth. So we have to educate moms about this, these, this technical geeky stuff because the phthalates and nail polish are in your bloodstream in four minutes when you apply nail polish. And it's not enough to make you sick, but they accumulate in the body. The phthalates in plastic containers in the kitchen that you store food with. You know, you put your leftover chicken in plastic containers, the next day the chicken's got phthalates in it from the container. So what do you do? You get glass storage containers. 
you know, you stop using plastic storage containers, the coffee cups uh, from the from the coffee shop. You you get uh, stainless steel, and you you bring it to the coffee shop and say, "Fill it up, please." Your own coffee mug, and you don't use those cups with the plastic lids on them. The steam condenses to the underside of the lid and drips back down to the coffee, full of phthalates. Bisphenol A is what the, what the primary one is called. And that's what's in water bottles. You have to avoid drinking water out of water bottles. They just published a study uh, about five weeks ago now that, you know, we've known about microplastics. Those are a problem. And they get into our body. But now they can identify nanoplastics with laser technology. And they find that in a one liter bottle of water, there's over 240,000 pieces of nanoplastic in one liter of water, and they get into your brain. When you drink that water, it gets into your bloodstream and it gets into your brain, and it activates inflammation in your brain. So what we have to do is teach people how to identify where the inflammation is coming from in my body. That's our goal in our event. Wow. And the truth is, I know it's overwhelming as people are listening to this. You know, you're just like, oh, no. But the good part, there is, there is a positive to this. That once you know, knowledge is power, so once we know this, they're not, you know, I, I believe in gradually making the changes, but once you do, they're not hard. These are swap. Right. It, it's right. that's a beautiful thing. And the fact that things can improve by changing your water bottles and changing just some minor things in terms of like the plastic. And, you know, I know years ago when I, way back when I started reducing toxins, you know, you do one thing and Eventually, you're living a you know relatively toxin free life as much as much as you can control, right? And, much and less, you, yeah, much less amazing. than what you were before. You know that's what's so wonderful. So I have a question. So you you went all over, and I have to say, how many years ago, Doctor Tom, did you do the Gluten Summit? How long ago was that? Oh, that was eleven years ago. Okay, so just everybody listening, Doctor Tom's summits are amazing because eleven years ago, I was really addicted. I think I've told you this. I just listened because it was so fascinating because you had people from Israel all over the world, you know, the top people really explaining things. And I became truly a gluten expert, I think, because of your summit. I listened to every word. And so then when my husband had an issue, I knew it's like I was so equipped. But really, I have to credit your summit for for making such a big difference in his well, life. Thank you so much. Yes, anyway, yes. So I'm Hundreds really of thousands of people have um, seen the Gluten Summit, and uh, um, it's changed a lot of lives. And I'm hoping this event will do the same. That's why we're doing this. You know, I'm not a professional docu series person, but when the fire hits, you know, then our team just jumps on board and does a great job. And this this event, um, it's, it's it's remarkable when you hear. The scientists talk, and I'm interpreting it in everyday language. Excuse me, excuse me, Professor. You just said da da da. Yes. Well, does that mean? Well, yes, it does. For example, here's an example. Professor Yehuda Schoenfeld uh, from Tel Aviv, Israel, is the godfather of autoimmunity. He is the most famous immunologist in the world, teaching medical doctors PhDs in immunology. And uh, he and I shared the stage in Rome in early December, and he made a comment that was just mind-boggling. He said, we are born 99% human. And what he meant was that, you know, a newborn baby has a little bit of bacteria in their gut from mom. Uh, the baby's microbiome is not much, but there's a little bit. And then... Natural childbirth helps to inoculate the, the microbiome and, you know, the good foods. And the breast milk has b good bacteria for, to ino uh, inoculate the microbiome. So he said, we are born 99% human and we die 90% microbial. Now, wait a minute. And all health care practitioners know that there's 10 times more cells of bacteria in the human body than human cells. You know, if you add up all the bone cells, brain cells, skin cells, muscle cells, all of them, um, there's 10 times more bacteria than all those cells. So wait a minute. So 
there's 90% of our bodies are made up of bacteria and 10% of our bodies are made up of human cells. Yes. Well, who's running the ship? You know, who's in charge here is a valid discussion to have as you start to read the science and you see that the microbiome, the good guys and the bad guys in your gut send messages out into the bloodstream all day, every day, that are either uh, turning on genes of anti-inflammation or turning on genes of inflammation. And uh, just those kind of thought provoked. So, Professor, wait, excuse me, Professor, did you just say we're born 99% human and we die 90% microbial? Yes. So does that mean that the bacteria in our guts are actually having a big influence on how our brain functions and the balance of the brain hormones called neurotransmitters and how our heart functions and the heart rate and the blood pressure and how our liver functions? Yes, yes, yes. They modulate, and that's the geek word that means has their hands on the steering wheel. The microbiome in the gut modulates all function in the human body. What? What? So what that, that means is that if there's one thing you're going to do, Mrs. Patient, to be healthier for you and your family, you focus on building a healthy microbiome. And that's what we're going to talk about a lot, uh, is interpreting these geeky science ideas that are right on the money to help understand how do we keep our body functioning better. Hey, Margie here. If you're looking for a way to stay motivated and get results in your bone building plan, then I have the perfect solution, the Happy Bones Club. This is my exclusive members community where you get direct access to me on our live monthly Q&A sessions, along with in-depth classes, guided workouts, and interviews with guest experts so you can continue to learn about all aspects of your bone health and tailor your journey to strength and vitality with the support of a community working towards the same goals as you are. So just go to tinyurl.com slash happy bones club to learn more, or you can click the link in the show notes. I hope you will join me and be part of this great community. Now back to the show. You know, that is so, so interesting. And you mentioned toxins. Was that a common theme from all? Huge, huge. It it actually is the main, main trigger for why every autoimmune disease is going up four to nine percent a year, every year. Uh, Cognitive decline is going up dramatically. Blue Cross Blue Shield tells us that there was a 407% 407% increase, not 10%, not 20%, not 100%, 407% increase in the diagnosis of Alzheimer's in 30 to 44-year-olds in a four-year period. In four years, there was a 407% increase. It's like, what? What's going on here? People's brains are highly inflamed because there's more toxins. You know, and we have one scientist that told us You know, in the European Union, there's over 20,000 chemicals that are outlawed. You can't bring them into the European Union. You can't put them on the food. You can't use them in making clothing. You you can't bring them in. Do you know how many chemicals are outlawed in the U.S. right now? Twelve. European Union's got 20,000. So it's the lobbying dollars that keeps us exposed to all of these toxic chemicals. And we have to wake up to this because these toxins that accumulate in our body are a big, big source of constant inflammation, pulling on the chain, accelerating whatever disease you have, whatever disease you have. And that's why we want to reach women of childbearing age because they have to understand They need to detox before they ever get pregnant. Six months to a year of detox. It's not a bottle of pills or two bottle of pills that these marketing people, shame on them for the garbage that they market. Take this and you'll be fine. Two bottles and you're good to go. Nonsense. 
it's going to take six months to a year to get all these toxins that have accumulated out of your body. So your baby, your future baby, has a better chance of full brain development to whatever his genetics, his or her genetics are. Wow, this is incredible. Were there any other? I know, you know, everyone's going to watch it because we'll really get the full. I can't wait. I know my husband and I are in it because my husband had this really horrible autoimmune situation that, you know, that was unbelievable had we not. And I have to say, well, you know, people will hear the story in the documentary, but, you know, we went to doctors all over the place and nobody, but nobody even address this. And, you know, he, he really truly went live to that. So yeah, uh, that's is, a really good example. Yeah. Of, this is near and dear, so near and dear to my heart because it happened to me. It happened in my family. My entire family are physicians, the best medical care. And this was missed. And it was, um, yeah, quite something. Yeah. So, yeah. so what, yeah. else, what other things did, what were some of the other? Oh, I'll give you one more. I'll, I'll, I'll yeah. give you one more. Dr. Kara Fitzgerald, uh, who's become really famous because her study that she published three or four years ago now, and she wrote a book on it called Younger You. And you hear Kara talking about how when she took healthy middle-aged men and women, but no disease, and if they wanted to be in this program, it was for eight weeks, and then a group of people that did not get the program who were healthy she showed that in eight weeks, she reversed their biological age by 3.2 years. In eight weeks of changing their lifestyle, uh, their home environment, uh, the foods they selected. So for two months, and your body was 3.2 years younger. There's a difference between chronological age, which is how long you've been on the planet, and biological age, which is how old is your body functioning as. And most people, their biological age is more than their chronological age. And Kara, Dr. Kara shows that in eight weeks, you can completely reverse it. Completely. And it's like, whoa. And that's made her world famous because it was a well-done study. No one can argue with the study and the way it was done, Right. So we've got these scientists that talk about how do you stop throwing gasoline on the fire? How do you identify it? And then how do you put it into quiet down mode? Let's get the anti-inflammatory genes turned up. How do you do that? So that's what our event is about. Oh, I, I love that. And you're a big person that talks about testing. I know that you love to, you know, that you can test for things because, you know, here you have this inflammation and you're not really sure of the source. So do they discuss that? Or is there anything you want to share about oh, yeah. it? Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. The rule is tests don't guess because you don't know. You think you're fine. But if you accept this concept that your microbiome, the good guys and bad guys in the gut, um, have their hands on the steering wheel of how your body functions, if you understand that enough to say, okay, I'll listen to that for the moment. How do I build a healthier microbiome? Well, one of the things is the bacteria in your mouth, called the oral microbiome, you swallow a liter a day of saliva. Just imagine how big a bottle a liter is. Adults swallow a liter a day of saliva. And when you've got too many bad bacteria in your mouth, and you don't know you've got bad bacteria in your mouth, well, you know, your toothbrush, you know, the water's a little pink when you're brushing your teeth, maybe... Or, you know, sometimes somebody will say you got bad breath, but not very often. Or, you know, those are the few signs that will tell you, you got a problem here. But most of us don't know. So if you don't test, if you don't do the little saliva test to look at what kind of bacteria do you have in your mouth, because that's where it's growing, and that's inoculating your gut all day, every day, that you can do so many things to get better. But if you don't do a simple test for the saliva in your mouth, you might miss the boat and not get the results that all of your work is. So some of our scientists talk about testing and how important it is and what those tests are. Yes. Yeah. No, I think that's great. And I think another thing just to talk about is there's really two types of inflammation. There's acute and chronic. Do you just want to share the difference? Because sometimes people, you know, think, really don't realize the chronic inflammation. You know, they think of the acute inflammation. That's really a good point. 
It's a very good point. In inflammation is not bad for you. Excessive inflammation is bad for you. That inflammation saves our life every day because we live in a world full of bacteria and bugs and viruses, you know, and so we're always being exposed to stuff. And it's our immune system trying to protect you that gets activated to kill all of that and keep it at low levels so that we don't get sick and the bugs don't take over inside our body. So your immune system is very important to protect you. But it's the excessive inflammation that is the big problem. So don't ever try and take anti-inflammatories to be healthier. That doesn't work. It doesn't work. It causes leaky gut. There's lots of problems. There's nothing wrong with anti-inflammatories for a short period of time if you need them. But you have to identify, why do I need them? Where's the inflammation coming from that's causing my need for anti-inflammatories, right? And so um, inflammation is your friend. Uh, excessive inflammation is the enemy. Yeah, that's just so important. And so if you were to, if you were to, we could go on and on, but I'm excited. I want to hear all the stories. I just, I truly can't wait. I, I love the trailer and it's just, it's wet my appetite because I always learn so much from you. And these story, and I think people learn from stories, and that's what I, I like about when you do, you know, programs like this. Because when you hear someone else's story, all of a sudden people see themselves, and they're like, "Wait, that's me." That's and you know, this person's gotten beyond that, but they were suffering. So many people, and it just breaks my heart. So many people are suffering, and you know, so often root causes are just not addressed. So. I love the fact that you have, besides all the scientists, you know, you have stories that people can really relate to. But what would you, if you had to give three tips, let's say three tips to everybody listening that they can even do right now before this comes out, because tell us the exact date of this. Uh, March 20th, March 20th. Uh, well, three things. Sure. The first thing, click on the link here below and register. And you'll see the trailer right away and you'll see Dr. Terry Walls a uh, world famous uh, person uh, who reversed her MS and she works with the MS Institute now and MS Foundation and lots of uh, neurodegenerative patients and does tremendous work. You see her start tearing up in the trailer because she says, who knows how much improvement is possible? Who knows? You know, you can arrest and reverse the development of autoimmune disease. So when you see the trailer, you understand what you're about to view. Wait one second, I have to just butt in. So Terry Walls, Dr. Terry Walls was on my summit and she's also been on the podcast, but she also with her situation had bone loss and she was able to reverse that as well. So when you watch- Marvelous. Exactly, oh, exactly. Other end and is doing amazing. With also with with bone loss. So when she treated, just like you said, you know, what's the weak link? Well, that was one of the ones too. So when she was able to treat the underlying inflammation and do all the amazing things she did, she also improved her bone health. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So the first is register. And so you can watch the trailer and there's a bunch of gifts for you when you register. Second, you can start now. Um, the most common cause of toxins accumulating in your body is we're all dehydrated. We don't drink enough water. When you pinch your skin, it should go back down immediately. It shouldn't stay pinched up and then go back down. It should go back down immediately. If it doesn't, you're dehydrated. And it's a third of an ounce per pound body weight. That's how much water you should be drinking every day is a third of an ounce per pound body weight. And if you're going in saunas and sweating a lot or exercising, producing a lot of sweat, it goes up to a half ounce of water per pound body weight. Very few people are drinking adequate, not excessive, adequate amounts of water. So the second thing you can do is um, uh, increase hydration. And for that, you want the best quality water you can get. Don't buy plastic bottles anymore, you know, and... That's new for me to say, but the science is really clear. There are too many poisons. There are too many nanoparticles of plastic in there that accumulate in your brain and accelerate cognitive decline. So you, the best water that you can possibly drink is your tap water. 
after it's gone through a water filtration system. And we'll talk about that. We'll talk about the difference in water filtration systems and all that. But just drink the best water you can get right now. We, when we buy water out and about, glass bottles. And the glass bottle companies are really happy because they're, the demand for them is going through the roof because these studies that came out four, five, six weeks ago, there's a few of them, on nanoplastics, they're terrible. They're really terrible. Uh, so don't buy plastic bottles of water. And the third thing, I'll tell, uh, I'll tell you this, this study. In the Journal of the American Medical Association, from Harvard, they did a study looking at couples go, going to assisted fertility centers. And as you may know, couples who are doing that, they're spending tens of thousands of dollars trying to get pregnant and have a healthy pregnancy. And they want to start a family. It's a beautiful thing. Uh, and they ruled out all of the known factors that determine success or failure. You know, cigarette smoking, alcohol consumption, exercise, no exercise, socioeconomic class, race. They ruled all of that out. And they just looked at how many servings of fruits and vegetables a person was eating a day. And they put the women into fourths, the lowest amount, next, third, and highest amount of servings of fruits and vegetables per day. Well, the results were shocking, completely shocking. The higher the amount of fruits and vegetables, the worse the outcome. The worse the outcome. And so those women in the highest category of fruit and vegetable consumption had an 18% less likelihood of successful implantation. 18%. And if they did get pregnant, they had a 26% less likelihood of a live birth. They had more miscarriages and stillbirths. Well, wait, what? What? When you eat fruits and vegetables, more, the more fruits and vegetables the less likely success to get pregnant? Yes. What? I mean, it, they found a group in that category of women that were eating organic. And in that category of organic fruit and vegetable consumption, it was the exact opposite. The more fruits and vegetables you ate, the better. It's the chemicals in the fruits and vegetables. They're more than ever before in history. The pesticides, insecticides, rodenticides, fungicides, antibiotics that are in your carrots and broccoli and cauliflower and lettuce, which is supposed to be really good for you, but they're being poisoned and the government allows this stuff in there. See, that's why in Europe, the European Union, there are 20,000 chemicals that are not allowed in the European Union. In the U.S., there are 12. And many of them are in our fruits and vegetables. Now, here's the good news, and this is number three of the th you asked for three recommendations. Women were put in the category of organic consumption if they ate three servings a week. Not 21 servings a week, but three servings a week. Why? Well, probably because they want to be a little healthier. So they're buying organic shampoo. Uh, in the bathroom and organic hand soap, you know, and they're, they're trying, they're just working in the right direction. And it made the difference between success and failure with artificial insemination. Wow. That's yeah. incredible. That's, that's the kind of information that you're going to get every single day of the eight days. It'll be one hour a day for eight days. So register the links there. Come join us. Learn this information for you and your family. Yeah, I can't wait. And I just think, you know, you don't just, I mean, I just did a summit where I recorded every, you know, but you actually traveled. <laughs> we met you in New York when you were here. I mean, I can't even imagine the amount of effort you you did to, to reach these people where, you know, all over. I just got home two days ago from the last trip. We're done now with the interviews. And my last interview was Fran Drescher. Oh, uh, wow. Nanny, the yeah. nanny. And Fran had uterine cancer 22 years ago. She's a 22-year survivor. And she had a good oncologist, but she asked the question, why did this happen to me, you know, in that New York voice of hers? And she realized that nobody knew in her world of 
very best doctors in L.A. and New York, nobody could answer her. So she started looking at functional medicine and integrative medicine, and she found the answers. And so she looks you in the eye. She looks into the camera, and she says, why are you putting these poisons in your house? Do you not know? Just listen to what we're telling you. And, she, and then she, ha, ah, and that laugh of hers that is just so, so engaging. But just from her heart, to, and she, the first thing you have to do, she said, because I asked her, Fran, what's the first thing people need to do? She smiled and she looked in the camera and she just started stroking herself. And she said, the first thing you have to do is take care of yourself. You really need to take care of yourself or you're no good to your family. And so you take care of yourself. You get healthier makeup. You get healthier shampoo. You get healthier soap. You just start learning one day after. And she kept stroking herself while she was talking, right? But uh, just to reinforce, it's baby steps. Baby steps. This baby step. And the theme of our event is progress, not perfection, right? We're all going to make mistakes, but you just start heading in the direction to stop throwing gasoline on the fire. That's the goal of our event. Oh, I love that. That's something I teach in my happiness course, progress, not perfection, because in terms of, yes. you know, perfectionism is, and I, I was always a perfectionist for, for many years, and so many yes. of us are, and we realize that just that that takes us down the road of unhappiness, but I love that, and that's sustainable that's doable, and that's how you make these lifestyle changes, that at 85, you're still out having fun and hiking and doing, and that's that's the life we want. So, Amen yeah. to that. Yeah, this is great. I can't wait to see it. And again, thank you. I For those of you, know, I, I told you how Dr. Tom has saved my husband. It was really helped me save my husband's life. So I'm just, I'm eternally grateful to you for how much you helped me. And it's exciting to me. It's so exciting that you know you did this and i just can't even imagine all the people and i hope people in, who are listening to the podcast you know really take this seriously because it can make such a difference you know we poo poo things we let everything we let things just simmer until they get that's the problem people let things oh that's not so bad not so bad i have to worry right, about it's it. not so bad and then boom one day you get this horrible diagnosis and your life is changed or, you know, you're, you're losing bone. I mean, you could, could, it, this has to do with osteoporosis too. And it's so sad that you could have done things 10 years ago. So whenever, it's never too late and it's never too early. And I'm just so grateful to you that to produce this. And as I said, I can't wait to hear. <laughs> Thank you, Margie. Thank you so much. Probably. Thank you. Thank you so much for being on. It's always a pleasure. And as I said, I can't wait for this. And thank you for making really changing more lives, which I know will happen after people watch this. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed my interview with Dr. Tom as much as I did, and now have a better understanding of why we need to address inflammation. I am so excited about his new docuseries, The Inflammation Equation, Decoding the Path to Optimal Well-Being. It's free. He has amazing people. He's interviewed, and it's just full of so much information that I truly believe can change your life. I can't wait to watch it. The information on how to access that and the link will be in the show notes. So make sure to watch that. And as always, thank you so much for tuning in. And I look forward to seeing you on the next episode.